<laughs> okay, that's better. Sorry about the audio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. There you go. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, yeah. Now we're here. So, so I, I finished my introduction. Really? Really? That's yeah. it? That's the yeah. whole intro? Well, you know, come Okay. On. This I'm, is a cowbop. You're supposed Cal to do that. Specific. Cowbop? It's a cowbop specific. Cowbop? What's, what's that? It's hard to come up here and say, well, I've done this and this and this yeah. and this. Mm -hmm. You guys are here for Bebop. Yes. Woo! Woo! But we'll really talk about whatever you want. If you've, if you've seen Bo in the over one million roles that he has played, <laughs> ask him about that, too, if it's, we're free. We're here for you. Well, Melissa, we know who Bo is in Bebop. Now it's your turn. I'm Melissa Fawn, and I play Edward. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Yay, yay. And I'm so happy to be here. I, I'll, I'll follow your suit. I'm following Bo's suit. Oh. Yeah. All right. They are introduced. So I'm going to go ahead and open the floor to some questions. Who has our first steamy ready question? Come on up here to the microphone so everyone can hear your question. And you have to do the Melissa Fawn special, and that is you have to tell us your name <laughs> and where you're from, because I'm very interested in that. Right. right over here? Oh, no, right in front, right here. Right. Right out here for you. We won't make you dance. No. Don't worry. Don't be Unless shy. Unless you want to. If you got a good dance well, move, you just do it. Uh, is this ideal link? Uh, okay. Yes. So there's a lot of like unanswered questions or like plot points open to interpretation on Cowboy Bebop. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, what is y'all's like favorite uh, unanswered plot point or thing you're most obsessed about that you just have a lot of questions about? Mm. What's your name, by the way? Uh, I'm call me Lucina. Lucina. Lucina okay. Yeah. Nice. From Arlington. from Arlington, Lucina from Arlington. Oh. I mean, I I think Bo. You know, yeah. I, it, it, the you. show is so great. Excuse me, because it, it it brings you somewhere where you're left with the with the the question, and you're left with the answers. Like my question is, where did Edward go to? At the very end, right? Mm -hmm. That's like my biggest question, and people have told me lots of theories of where they think she's gone to, and I I don't quite know. Did she go find her father? Did she just go off to? you know, to hack someone else's ship or, you know, like, wh where did she go? I don't know. That's my unanswered mm -hmm. question. Do you have any? That's mine, too. <laughs> no, really. It is. It is. is it really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. You know. I would have liked to have known. Yeah, I would have liked to have known. And, um, you know, after Jet put his past to rest, um, you know, I was, you know, curious about where he would be going. But then Watanabe said, nah, that's it. And uh, so we were all left wanting. And, and of course, from the movie, we know all about that. So the movie, that was all a dream, by the way. Mm. So we can come back, right? <laughs> the, the, the gang can come back because what happened in that movie didn't really happen in that movie. So he's alive and, and right. everything is, is, is cracking. Everything's good. <laughs> I love your theory on that. So now I want to hear what, what you guys, where you guys think Ed is today. Just a wild guess. Where do you right. think Ed is today? Well, okay, how about this? How about Ed? Um, what happened to uh, Han Solo? He, he got uh, frozen and, you know. Oh, I was like, at which point? <laughs> no, no, no. Han Solo, he got frozen. Yes. And then, I think that happened to Ed. She's somewhere and she wakes up and she's still her age. But, you know, it's light years away and she wakes up and she you know she's out doing her good ever you know but the same age that's probably pitchable because they wouldn't have to do new animation cells the right you see mm -hmm. that's perfect and i can voice her and that'll be perfect no i i re literally just came up with that but i thought well that would be kind of cool that's a good one <laughs> i'm thinking that maybe ed now is in cirque soleil <laughs> you know 
She's, she would do very well. Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. What about what about uh, Jet Black? Jet. Yeah. Um, he's running a boarding house in upstate New York. <laughs> and he's serving. <laughs> Bill Pippins and B. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the special. People come. Or which kind of mushrooms? All over. <laughs> well, well, yeah, what kind of mushrooms? Yes. Which kind of mushrooms sure. are you serving? Shit. Chucky mushrooms Shit. on ice. Chucky, yes. Mm. Yes, that's like the Saturday night special. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's, that's what that is. Do we have another fresh question? Come on yeah. up. Come on up. If you guys want to, somebody can line up behind him. We can get some some nice, nice fast shots out. Or <laughs> hiya! Oh, we met before. Hello. Tell us your name again and where you're from. Uh, my name's Cameron. I'm from Alvarado. Yep. Um, so, bebop is considered by many to be one of the best, if not one of the best, like dubs, like. Y'all, the whole cast just did absolutely fantastic. Thank even you. like, even like sub supremacists are just like, no, Bebop, you, you watch it dubbed because that's, that is Bebop. That's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. And I just want to know from y'all's perspective, what, what do you think about that whole process, the direction and everything? What, what made it what it was? Mm -hmm. Why is it so, why does it stand out so Can much? Can I say from, my guess? From Go ahead. Anime they didn't have to audition. The director what? knew they were perfect for those roles. Wow. But it I'm going to let them answer. It was like a it was like the the fate of the gods like that we all came together but it actually it was our producer Kevin Seymour who's up mm -hmm. in heaven looking at us right now um that we all were he knew all of our work individually and just assembled it together and and he gave the show to Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, our director, who is also an actor. And I would always say, you know, Mary is an actor's director. She really, she just, she got inside all of us and she just knew us. And, and there was also, um, on most animes, um, I mean, before even knowing about this project, but on most animes, it's all done by time. You have to get in and out. You've got to like get it done quick. And Mary said, oh, we had the luxury of time. They didn't care. We could take as long as we wanted on these scripts. And for me personally, uh, I mean, as the first day that I walked into the studio, Mary said, do you know about this show? And I said, no. And, and she said, well, come with me. I don't know if she did this with you too, Bo, and I'm going to let you tell your story. But um, she she took me into uh, this big screening room, and she said, well, this is the project. I just want you to watch the opening titles. And, <laughs> and it started playing, and I heard the music, and my jaw dropped, and I thought, oh, my God, this is a really cool-looking show, and it sounds cool. So, I mean, there were so many factors already brought into it because it's such a great anime Sorry. I, I apologize. Words. I'll see if we can turn it down. Kiss me. Um, anyways, um, but I, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe how great the music was. I couldn't believe just how great visually it looked. And we just had a she created a magic chemistry with each of the actors, and we never worked together. Once in a while, I'd get to hear Bo in my headphones if he recorded before me, um, but. We never got to work together. That's what you do in anime. You don't work with the other actors. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there were there were so many wonderful, wonderful factors that came together for me in that mm -hmm. sense. The luxury of time and the luxury of having just an amazing director and just this great piece of work mm -hmm. that we got to dive into and create. We, we were given a chance to create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when we say the luxury of time, we weren't under pressure to get each loop done. So consequently, we could uh, really make sure the dub matched every flap as perfectly as possible. And to the point where, I remember I finished the loop and I was feeling really good about what I did. You know, I said, damn, that's pretty good. 
and, uh, and, and Mary said, uh, we're going to have to do it again, Bo. I said, no, it's right. And she's, no, it's really not. It's really not perfect. So we're going to have to do it again. And so I said, oh, it's going to be like this, is it? You know, she said, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, but yeah, that was uh, one of the uh, one of the reasons I think the dub ended up as, as good as it is so that the, the, the people who are the subs can actually watch the dub and not, you know, feel like they're uh, going against their principles or whatever that, you know, whatever that means. Um, and uh, when I, you know, I didn't know what it was, what the show was. I thought it was about cowboys. And uh, so I thought I was going to be talking like, yeah, you know, and spitting it in the spittoon. And, and so uh, Mary said, no, no, that's, that's, and then she explained that um, cowboys are, uh, bounty hunters in our universe and the bebop's my spaceship and i said oh that's cool right and so she said we're gonna go out on a ledge and uh maybe use your voice and 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 tweak it a little bit right and so i was and my original thought was oh that's boring you know i mean who wants to use their own voice and doing stuff you know we want to be somebody some other character you know <laughs> and so she said no that's that's where we're going and uh uh you know, and the rest is the rest is history. But we had time to 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 massage it and and understand it. And of course, we I didn't know you know how special it was going to be. I don't think any of mm, us did. None of us knew. But when I heard some of the music, and then that you really really got me. You know, like Tank. You know, our oh. opening song. And yeah. And I say, wait a minute, this is this is pretty cool. It was, it was kind of like you know the Polaroid photos. You guys were you know they slowly develop and so they slowly come into focus and that's what happened kind of like with bebop you know it's like and that and then the final you know wow this is really cool this is really cool but then when we finished we moved on to other stuff you know yeah, and yeah. then uh but then the the um, convention culture billowed and now we're lucky enough to have an opportunity to see and talk with you guys and you know, I mean, that's one of the best parts of my life is when I come to a convention and I can can uh, hear you express your feelings about what Cowboy Bebop meant to you and uh, very special. So. Great mm. question, Cameron. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Hello, my name is Eric. Uh, I was kind of wondering, how did you guys get in? Well, who said uh, my own from my name's Eric. I'm from uh, I live in Fort Worth, ah. and I was kind of wondering, how did you guys get into the industry? What was your first production? Your Are you first? comfortable answering? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Now here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Are you talking voiceover yes. or just the okay in voiceover? Mm -hmm. You go first. You, go oh, first you want me to go first? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to have my my background music. I, I I like that. Yeah. This yeah. one's your theme, <laughs> Big Daddy. Yeah. Uh, um. Well, I started, well, first of all, let me tell you this little tidbit. My first voice job was in 1969. I was the voice of a coach in a puppet movie. Now, cut to many years later, I had an on-camera career in Hollywood, and a dear friend, Doug Stone, was, he was, uh, I don't know where you go, overseeing the, the dubbing of foreign live-action films. And so I would be called in if there was a, an African character in a German movie, we would dub it into English and I can use my general African accent that you can't get away with now, right? Uh, I say, I did it for my father, you know? And uh, so we did that. Um, and then one day he came in and he said, would you like to do some anime? And I said, what's anime? <laughs> 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 I had no clue. I had no clue. But uh, then he explained to me, he said, yeah, that sounds like fun. You know, that sounds like fun. And he said, well, I warn you, you're not going to make much money. I said, oh, you know, I make my money on camera. And, you know, this is that sounds like fun. I'll do that. And um, and that's how I got into the main part of my act, voice acting career. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. My story is a little different. I mean, I had been you know, uh, singing and dancing and acting since I was a kid. And, um, and I remember, um, when I was in my teens and my agent had an audition for me for the little mermaid. And 
I was like, oh, Disney, The Little Mermaid, that sounds adorable. And I had three callbacks and I went back to, to Disney and I got to meet everyone and I sang for them and I read for them. And I know you heard this story yesterday, so I'm sorry. Um, I'll try to vary it up for you, I'm okay Erica. with hearing it again. <laughs> but anyways, you know, they showed me the stills and they're like, well, we haven't, we haven't figured out whether... Um, Ariel is going to be a redhead or a mer or a brunette or a blonde, and I remember thinking, "Oh, this is too this is too cool." So I didn't get it, of course. Um, but then, jump to a few years later, I had moved out of my parents' house, and I took my first job, like real job, um, you know, living on my own in Hollywood, and I was the receptionist for a post production house or a post production studio. And a post production is when they and it was for a commercial post-production house, so they were editing commercials. So it, from from all aspects of it, they would, you know, the, the client from the ad agency, let's say Toyota brings in, you know, they film the commercial, then it goes to my bosses that I had worked for, and they edit it. But while the clients were all there, you know, they would have lunch, I would order Chinese food for them every day, and or whatever, you know, whatever they wanted. Um, and um, uh, I, always accepted everything at the front desk and the, 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 the condition for me working there was that they would let me out for auditions. So if I had auditions, I'd say, I'll be back in two hours and, you know, I'll take my lunch break and I'll work late. So I did that. And so one day this wonderful woman came in and her, and she worked in the next building and her name was Elaine Craig. And Elaine Craig was one of the and still is one of the biggest voiceover casting directors. And I didn't know who she was. And she brought in um, demos or uh, VO auditions for whatever spot that my bosses were going to be editing with the client. And I, I took them and she said, oh, are you an actress? And I said, yeah. And she said, do you do voiceover? And I said, no. And she said, well, you really, you really should do voiceover. And then I told her about The Little Mermaid. And she's like, that's great. That's wonderful. She said, I want you to make a demo could you make a demo for me? Like just read magazines, Re read any ads, or if you see something on TV, just like write it down and record them for me. So a few days went by and I had not recorded it yet. I was still thinking like, wait, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? And uh, she, she called and said, Melissa, did you make that demo yet? I said, I said, no. And she said, that's okay. Can you come over here on your lunch break? I'm in the next building. We're auditioning for the new voice of Betty Boop. And I said, oh, I love Betty Boop. I grew up loving Betty Boop. I've seen them all. And she said, yeah, I want you to come over. So I went over, auditioned, sang, I want to be loved by you. And I sang the whole song. And I had a great time. And I went back to work. And then she called a couple hours later. She said, you have a call back. Can you come back over? And I want you to meet Richard Fleischer. And Richard Fleischer was the son of Max Fleischer, who created Betty Boop created Popeye and Beetle Bailey and all these old ones. So that was, I booked it. I got it. And, um, and that was my foray into voiceover. So I got very lucky and the whole world opened up for me in the land of voiceover and then jumped to a few years later. Um, I met Victor Garcia. Did you know Victor Garcia? Um, and he was working with my brother, Tommy. And he said, you know, I'm working with this company and they're doing, it's called anime. Would you like to be a part of this? I know you do voiceover. And I said, yeah, of course I'll do it. And the first anime I did was Giver and Orgus. These really? two old school I titles. Yep, yep. Those are the two, and we did them like in a room all together, and and there were no beeps. Mm -hmm. No, I, I did it with Steve Bloom. That's where I met Steve Bloom oh, really? a million years ago when he was like, like playing guitar and, and not voice acting at all. He he just had this cool voice, and he was working with Victor and my brother Tommy. It was like one big family. So nice. Steve's like my brother. So yeah. So that was how I got in. Okay. So neither of them knew what anime was. No, no. we didn't. Nope. It was nope. brand new. It was brand new. Great question, though. No, sorry, I was yeah, long-winded. You <laughs> You're welcome. Good question. Thank you. Good question. Uh, Hi, what's your name? My name is Seth. Hi, uh, Seth. I'm from Oak Cliff, and I have a question. Have you guys seen the live-action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop? And if so, what was your opinion on that? <laughs> <laughs> we just heard from Bo, so I'm going to let Melissa go first. Well, you know, we did, a, we did some press for the live-action, right? 
we did it online. We did these interviews for like who? For like Vanity Fair and Hollywood Reporter or there's something. I don't know. Didn't we you do did? some? You did. I didn't. We did. All four of us we did. did. We're, we're, I, I we must did. have been asleep. What what happened? We you were... sure forgot about it in the last panel. Before it came out. Remember it was the four of us? Oh. <laughs> Boy, I must be getting old. It was wait, wait. It was a dream. It was a there dream. There you go. It was uh, a dream. Um, you know what? What we 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 promoted it and you know said, hey, you know, this is one big franchise. What's good for us is good for them and good for us and good for them. And and we, so we really wanted to support it. Now I will honestly tell you that I didn't watch it. I saw bits and pieces of it, and then I did see when that I was really intrigued to see how they brought Edward into it. Mm. And um, I'm not gonna lie, I, I wasn't crazy about it, um, but I, I wish that maybe she was directed differently or or just, I don't know, I, that's just me. Um, but I do applaud that they brought it to live action and you know, I would have liked to have seen what happened with it. I haven't sat down to watch it though. So, do you have an opinion or? Yeah. Okay, and it's right there. <laughs> See that face? That's what it is. That's the opinion. No, well, I, I uh, like you said, I salute them for the effort. Um, they didn't consult us. Mm -mm. They they asked us for our photos. Remember the the <gasps> photos? They asked us for photos to put in like a in um on a board like they were as like we were posters. bounties. You know? Yeah. Did they come on? Did were they on okay, an episode? Okay, let me tell you this. <laughs> I don't even know because we didn't we didn't get paid for that. Um, I never saw, I watched the live action some of it. And I never finished it, but I never saw any of those photos. Mm -mm. But uh, Mustafa and Shakir, who did Jet, had a little two or three minute clip where he gave a tour of the bebop, and it was a standalone cl clip. I don't know, it was on, on Netflix. So I watched that. And so I gave a tour of the Bebop. And he goes by this board, and there's Steve Bloom's headshot there. What? Yeah. And there was my headshot there. Below and to the side of Steve's. But my headshot was upside down. Oh. It was upside down. And um, that, it was, that was the extent of our involvement with oh, the show. And just you two, they didn't put one Yeah, and they didn't put the they didn't put the, the ladies in at all. And you know, I've often said that I felt that if if they had respected the voice cast more and maybe put us in a little card game at the end of the show. Oh, that would have been so cool. That would have been amazing. Yeah, I think they might still be filming the show. But because the fans maybe would have Yeah, because the fans I think you guys might be would have maybe related to that, right? I mean if the voice cast was in it involved somehow. That would have been a really cool homage, yeah, and yeah. yeah, they didn't. They didn't want. We were good, gracious about supporting them, but they were not gracious about supporting us. Right. Let's, let's get right. real here, I guess. We wanted. Yeah. It, I, I really wanted it to be a success because I felt that it would introduce more people to the anime. Yeah. Right? What? Yeah, to Cowboy Bebop itself, and then yeah. hey, let's check out the anime now. It's based on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true, but yeah, it wasn't really a a, a two way street as no. far as the the support. So, yeah. so what do you think of it? I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, okay. I'll, I'll have to say I was entertained to a certain degree, mm -hmm. but it you know it was different. I didn't feel like I was really watching Cowboy Bebop. But again, that's just me, and I know there are people who watch it who really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I can't put that down for that that it's entertainment or not, or if it's good entertainment. But uh, the experience could have been better for us yeah. I think. yeah okay very true all right good question though. good question thought provoking <laughs> yes hello what's your name uh david where are you from uh from here richardson texas oh, dallas cool. basically okay and uh, everyone's asking such great questions so thank you mine's kind of trivial i didn't know if you oh. wanted to say uh, ed's name and bring the character to life i don't know if you know her full name i don't know if i remember her whole <laughs> That was name. like a Greek, a, a I mean, a, a Turkish okay, name, just right? Give it to me and I'll put my glasses on. Yeah. Was it I, like your father You're was, so your father yeah, was Edward Turkish? Yeah, Edward Howe, Peplong, Tavruski, the third. It's fine. No, it's totally fine. Here. As long as they're comfortable. <laughs> right. 
Edward Wong Hal Pepelu Tversky the Fourth. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yes. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. If you see a mysterious stranger, follow him. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta say something now, sir. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. But wait, Bo, you gotta say something. What? Uh, something. Something. <laughs> yeah, eat your Thank bell peppers you. and beef. All right, I said that already. Hey, Spike, tell me. Eat your bell peppers. It's and my beef. bell peppers and eat beef. Peppers. And if you don't like them, go someplace else and eat, Spike. If we let them go, they'll just keep going. It's okay. Keep going. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Jacob from Plano, Texas. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Jacob. Um, it's good to meet you guys. Good to meet you. So I kind of have like a two-parter. Um, I'll just start with my first thing. Uh, you got it. Do y'all have a favorite episode in mind? <laughs> Mushroom Samba. <laughs> yeah, shit, taki mushrooms on ice. Yes. And you remember when Jet was uh, talking to his bonsai trees? You know? <laughs> and then he says, uh, "Who am I anyway?" <laughs> and then that was was that the episode where uh, Spike was walking to heaven? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, but do you know what other episode is really great? And we were just, we were talking about this, about how we used to get together. When the four of us come to cons together, we do a live reading, usually, of the four of us. And the only episode that we're all in, like, for a sizable amount together is Toys in the Attic. Yeah. And that is a great episode. Yeah. And we got to do it, we get to do it yes, together. Yes, we did the live reading of Toys in the Attic in L.A., Remember yes, for, for yes. the uh, for the fundraiser for yeah, the for Japan, for Japan. Okay. and uh, we did it in Birmingham, Alabama, and then we did it in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yeah. on Halloween. Yeah, yeah. and we all dressed in costumes, and we did not cosplay, but we just dressed in random other costumes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I had my dreads, don't you know? That's right. You had your dreads. dreads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your second question? Um. So my second thing, I was just gonna say, just like thank you guys so much for making this anime. That you know, I'm sure I'm not alone whenever I say that it means so much to me, and uh, just the way that I interpret it is kind of, you can kind of see it in just like the text at the end of the last episode. You're gonna carry that weight. Yeah. So I watched this anime at a time mm. in my life that was very pivotal. So. Um, I just want to say thank you guys. Aww, Aww. Thank you thank for you. sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. I love your shirt. Hi. Um, my name is Kendall. I am from Aubrey, Texas. Hi, Kendall. Hi. <laughs> so one of my questions is, I have two. One is, if y'all were able to meet your Cowboy Bebop characters in real life, what would you say to them and why? Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay, well, that's an interesting... I don't think I've ever had that question. I have that's never had question. that question either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would go up to Jet and say, can I borrow $500? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would say to him, but... Because uh, everyone asks me for money. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, exactly. I get asked for money a lot. Um, I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I, hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd probably, like... Um, you know, I'd probably like want to sing with Edward or something or, or, you know, and do cartwheels with her or something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then I'd probably want to give her a big hug. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's very sweet. Aww. Um, my last question is that, um, y'all said we can ask anything besides y'all's characters, right? Sure. Of course. Um, would y'all meet y'all's other characters in real life as well? Would you? What would you do with them? Like other characters that we've played? Oh my goodness, there are so many. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd I'd have to think that when I when I see each, if I saw each of my characters in person, I would see like a little mirror maybe over their heads because somehow we're a reflection of each other. Because I feel like I put a lot of myself into into each of my characters even mm -hmm. ones that maybe don't sound like me but 
usually a lot of my characters have good essence of M Melissa mm. in them. So mm. maybe, I don't know, I would just want to look at them and, and I don't know, see some kind of reflection or something. I don't, I don't quite know what I would say though. Yeah. <laughs> I would probably uh, ask the Raikage if he wanted to arm wrestle. <laughs> and I would take him down. Yeah, that's it. Good Thank question. You. You're welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. <gasps> Look at Spike. Spike. Hey. It's about time you came back. He made it. He made it, right? You finally made it. Tell me your name again. I'm sorry. Uh, Cade from Cade. Wichita Falls. Cade with a K. Yeah. Cade, Cade with a K. With a K. Um, mm -hmm. It's so awesome to see you guys. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was thinking about this. Um, so... Each character in the Bebop crew each has such an, a um, standout personality, and each one of y'all bring that with y'all's voices and y'all's performances and everything like that. Um, with uh, Jet being the glue that holds the group together, Ed being comedy relief, uh, Faye being the femme fatale, and Spike being the wild card. Um, does that attitude or that behavior translate to y'all? Y'all actually, when y'all all four come together, is Bo the wild card? Are you the the comedy relief or anything like that. No, it's just a big love fest okay. when we're all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a family coming together. Like, what have you been doing? How's your family? How's, uh, you know, how's Cece? And like Bo and, and everyone has watched my little boy completely grow up from mm. baby to he's 13. He's an now. extraordinary human being too. I mean, Thank Jude you. is just amazing, Thank amazing you. person. He really is. My baby. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he's, he's great. He thinks the world of Uncle Bo too. <laughs> <laughs> he does he does but yeah it's just like i feel like it's just but it's like picking up where you left off last time and yeah. it might be a few months or more sometimes mm. but when it happens it's always we have our, our open-ended text yeah you know, yeah the, all the time yeah. and they're like how are yeah. you oh it's your birthday yeah. and yeah 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 it's but like, I, I have to say sometimes when we're together i'll you know i'll um uh, needle Steve. Yes, but you if, do. Yeah, I'll, I'll yes, you say, do. All right, Spike. You're going to be banned from the Bebop. <laughs> you know, you watch yourself. You know. Please do. You know, but but yeah, we have fun. There's a lot of love behind. Yeah, lots I will of love. say, in my time with them this weekend, I think they're more like them than they care to admit. <laughs> because she's absolutely she's adorable she's already got the high-pitched voice and she's definitely a tinker and, yes, and, yes. and Bo is just like him because that tough exterior is a facade and he's just so likable deep down and we all love jet and there's a reason for that Aww. so they are they are very much like their characters in the best possible ways Aww. thank you thank you, saying thank that. you. Awesome question. You said just what I wanted you to say. Oh, <laughs> that'll be five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> Good question, man. Hiya. Hi, my name's Roberto from here in Dallas. Hey, Roberto. Um, it's a little bit of a thought-provoking question, considering that the series itself is well over twenty years old. I'm not going to say exactly when. <laughs> That's well over twenty years old. Seeing how big it's gotten well over the years, if you guys now, well, how do I put it? If you guys know now, which if you knew that back then, if you, that makes sense to you guys, if you woke up tomorrow and it was the day before you got the call to do the series, would you do it all over again? Are you seriously asking that question? <laughs> So would you do it all over again? Yeah, yeah I'd say no. Nah, I got. Well, I'm gonna play golf. I can't. Uh, you, know, I can't. <laughs> you know, actually, obviously, you know, this is. Uh, it's it's such a wonderful project, and we uh, we have a wonderful family of the actors and, and Mary Elizabeth. I mean, it's just it's just the best. I feel very blessed to have been asked to do Jet, and I would do it over and over and over again. I I concur. Yes, no, I, I feel exactly the same way, and I would not do anything differently. I, I just feel like it was it was just pure wonderfulness. It was yes. just pure everything good yes. about the experience. And then who knew that we'd be here 20 years later? Yeah. And 25. Ugh. 98 we did it, so it's 25. What's 98? Yeah, 98 really? we did it. Holy yeah. moly. Yeah, Anyways, mm. I was 12. So that thing. No. <laughs> no. 
I want to be really old. I was one. Um, it, but you know, you were one. I was one. Get out of here. What? <laughs> I forget about Go it. Go back to you your know. seat. Are yeah. you being serious? Yeah. He was um, one. Go back to your Saturday, seat. I turned 26. So yeah, I was oh, one year old. Oh, happy, happy birthday. Happy Thank birthday, you. baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> Yay, good question. <laughs> oh, beard, how are you? Man, I have serious beard envy. Oh, how long have you had that thing? A beard is gorgeous. How long have you had it? Three years now. Three gorgeous. years? Gorgeous. This right. is a wow. well You can raise Beautiful. the mic if you need to. Oh, yeah. I believe mm -hmm. in you. You work at a studio. Yeah, that's You got true. this. <laughs> yeah. um, what was the hardest lesson you guys learned on your on-camera career and then on your voice acting career? Hardest lessons. Do you want to go first? Well, for me, mm -hmm. it was that acting is harder than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And um, I had spoken about this earlier. When I first started, I, I did plays. And it was just a ball. It was fun. And, and, uh, and then when I started doing uh, on camera, I realized how complicated it was, you know, in terms of, um, you know, when you shoot the master and you have all this business that you're doing, you got to remember when you did what you did you know all the way through the scene and if you don't remember you know if i pick up and take a drink i have to remember when i did that and if i look to melissa and if i looked here all of those little details monitoring yourself uh and that's when i realized i, I think i better i think i better study and work on this mm -hmm. because uh you know doing a stage play is, is just you know mm -hmm. awesome but yeah. when you when you're doing a, a film you know, you have to hit your mark and and repeat your stuff. Remember when you said it. I remember I was doing American President and Michael Douglas, had, uh, we had shot the master and he, had, he was going to do his close up. And at one point in the scene, he ran his hand through his hair, but he didn't remember which hand he used. Oh, right. No. But he being the star of the, of the movie, right. they had it written down in a book. But for Bo. Of course, I don't run my hand through my hair very often, <laughs> but but, but uh, I'd have to remember everything that I did when I did it. But um, so yeah, so this uh, the script supervisor for continuity, they make notes about when you did, you know, how you did things, and and he had the comfort, and she had the answer. She said, "Your your 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 left hand, Michael." She said, "Okay, you know," but uh, that was my my wake up call in terms of thinking, you know, I had this huge ego. And, and I know it's hard to believe he, I had this huge ego and I was thinking, you know, it's acting, how hard can it be? Mm -hmm. But and then I realized I gotta, I gotta learn, you know, I gotta learn my craft, mm -hmm. you know, cause you know, when you're in school, at least back then I didn't study acting in school. It was just a sidelight, but you know, you, you learn character development, mm -hmm. but you don't know, learn camera technique. You know, like if you're doing uh, on camera, off, off camera, looking at the eye of the person that's closest to the camera, yeah. not to the other eye. You know, li those little things like that wow. that you learn. You know, it was OJT was on the job training. And consequently, I was once I realized I was really cool before I realized how much I didn't know. Yeah. Then when I realized how much I didn't know. I was so nervous and scared. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, yeah. But luckily, things kind of worked out. Right? Oh, man. <laughs> I agree with you, Bo, and I, um, you know, I, I've done a lot of stage work, mm -hmm. and and then I've done some TV and film as well, and there there is just to be an actor, and we talked a lot about this yet yeah. yesterday about finding your unique self and and finding what makes you you, and not worrying about everyone else and what they're doing. Just finding your unique self, be it as a voiceover artist or someone on stage or on TV or film. That was a big lesson for me. That, I mean, and I think it took many, many years to really understand and not put so much pressure. This is regarding getting the job, right. first, first of all. Mm -hmm. Not putting all that pressure on myself and to just say, you know what? This is what I do. And it either works or it doesn't. And maybe this actor here has exactly what they need and I don't. I have to understand that. It's not about the ability. It's not about whether I'm this or that. It's just the day that this person gets a job or the day that I get the job. Um, but 
what Bo touched on also is the studying mm -hmm. and to never stop being a student of your craft right. and your mm -hmm. art and to always, always be open and willing to be directed mm -hmm. and to, to trying something different than you might have thought and remembering that performing is a collaborative effort. Right. It's not just Michael Douglas. It's the director. It was Bo in that scene with him, right? Mm -hmm. But it's about everyone working with him. So I think the hardest lesson, I, I can't recall even when it was, it was just to, to keep my ears open mm -hmm. and listen and really listen, whether it was on stage, working with a choreographer or a director or wherever I was, to really listen. Because sometimes they only want to say it once. Mm -hmm. And if you have to ask them again, then they have to go back and then that's time. So I don't know, I, I answered a lot no, of different awesome. things, but be true Thank to you. your craft yeah. and, and be a student of it mm -hmm. for your life. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Hello. Sarah. I'm from Dallas. Hi, Sarah. And my question is, in playing and doing Cowboy Bebop, who is your favorite character to have your character interact with? Oh, wow. See, we never really got to interact. I know. Huh? We didn't get to act together. No, in no. scenes. When in you scenes. shared a scene with someone. Yeah, I know. Like, who was your favorite actor to play off of? Yeah, well, yeah, but there were times in Cowboy Bebop that we didn't have any voice in our headphones. Like it might have just been Oh, if us. you recorded an episode first, yeah. Like if oh, you were the yeah. first one recording that episode, you don't have anyone. Mm. But then if you had the luxury of hearing Bo Billingsley in your <laughs> headphones, well, then you you were magical. <laughs> I love you. So hers is Bo. And wait, what did you say? <laughs> so yours is Bo, that your favorite Mine's actor that. to play off of. Mine's uh, Melissa. Oh. <laughs> that was horrible. Thank we you. couldn't answer it any other way. No. Well, it's Bo. Wait, well, it's not Bo. No, it's Jet Black. Okay. <laughs> it's, right. Can it's, I? It's Jet and Ed. Um, oh. Jet, Texas, from San Antonio. Mm. I don't use my real name. No. <laughs> Two the derivative questions, sadly, because I was not first. But the first question is fairly simple. Since he asked what your favorite episode was, what was your least enjoyable episode to watch after it was made? And secondly, as we have Trigun being remade and has been remade, and we have Kenshin that's been remade, if they offered to remake Bebop with modern graphics, how fast would you say yes? Yesterday, they already yeah, did. Yeah, yesterday, a couple of weeks ago, you know, that's, that's, that's right, yeah. Wow, that's an interesting question. Compared to yourself. Well, oh, I have a funny story though. I have to say just 30 second uh, diversion. I had an audition the other day um, before I left and I kid you not, the character description was like for reference, character description, Edward on Cowboy Bebop. Wow, awesome. And I was like, I better get this job. <laughs> <laughs> Can't mess this one up. <laughs> I better. But if I don't get it, I'm going to have to look it back up to see what it see is. Who got <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Put a contract out on him. Oh my God. Maybe. I don't think, you're seriously, like, what did I do wrong? Like, I don't know if I have a, 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 a least favorite. Yeah, episode. well, I would say, Whatever jet showed up the least. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's right. But, Mine too, Bo. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean it's it's just a marvelous um project and there's you know, I, I have nothing that I would say negative about except for maybe one episode which is Mushroom Samba. It was, oh. you know, there was just a little something, something going on there, but I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't have a least. I don't have a least. Mm -mm. Was it know. Cowboy Bebop that gave me nightmares with the thing in the fridge that grew and yes. came to life? Yes. That's, yes. that's toys, toys in the Attic. Toys in the Attic. That's yes. mine. Okay. That's your Is that least right? Yeah. yeah. It's just terrifying. Oh, it's terrifying? Good. Yeah. Well, well, we, I clean we out the freezer regularly. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> 
Hi. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Sarah from Arlington. Hi, and I have Sarah. two questions. Um, what would be, what, do you know your favorite song from the track list? Oh, man. Hmm. I mean, I, I like Tank because it's just, you know, I mean, I've, heard, I've heard it so much because I listen to it periodically. It gets my blood running and oh, things. Yeah, but, me too. I yeah. mean, like my son even like goes around the house going, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> Yeah, he does that. I don't know. It has to always go back to Tank. What's your favorite song? Uh, Cats on Mars. Oh, Cats uh, on Mars. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then, and what's uh, your second? Yeah. Uh, if y'all were able, like if you had the opportunity to be in the live action, would y'all do it as your own character? Oh. Well, we never turn work down. No. <laughs> That's true. You know, yeah. I, actually, I did turn one gig down when I found out it was triple X. And I didn't realize, you know, because they don't tell us stuff. You know, when we, you know, everything is secret and all of that. Oh and it God. turned out it was like, triple. yeah, yeah, it was triple X. And uh, I mean, not that I have anything against it, but I just didn't want to be part of that project mm -hmm. and uh, have my voice yeah. meant to it. You know, yeah. so seriously. I mean, it's just a personal choice. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Melissa. Oh, Cowboy yeah. Bebop to do the live action. I mean, I, I kept thinking like maybe on the live action, it would be so perfect if they made Edward like, a, um, you know, like Roger Rabbit where there were like live action people, but then, you know, right, Roger yeah. was like, oh, <laughs> if just like, Ed was animated. <laughs> yes, if great. just Ed was animated and they use my voice. There you go. That would be so great. <laughs> What's the matter with that? Wouldn't that have been a cool thing? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're welcome. We have like three minutes, I think. <gasps> oh my so. God, oh, it's Santa Claus. Look who came to visit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm Santa from uh, Fort Worth. Hello, Santa. And <laughs> okay. I have a bit of a sensitive like type of topic, but mm -hmm. I think it's crucial because um, the reason I think Cowboy Bebop resonates with a lot of people um, like myself um, is that it's very much a diverse, very much grounded type of anime. Yeah. It's very much based on the cultures, the races, you know, the people that really we are. Mm -hmm. Like whenever you were going into the project, um, were you kind of able to see that and just kind of see like the progression that, you know, like basically a Japanese, you know, creator is doing something that's very much a worldwide type of, I would say, art form? Yeah, I mean, I think when I first saw it, visually and and as we progressed because we only got to see it one episode mm -hmm. at a time as we were recording it we never got the script beforehand and we we just did it in the studio mm -hmm. and it evolved as we went but as we were recording and got to see the stories progress each episode you really felt like you were part of a, a special world and and a, a, and definitely something progressive i mean edward herself Mm -hmm. is progressive you know she was way before we even you know we even thought so um i definitely felt like i was part of something that was bubbling mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I felt it, it took a while mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but I, I eventually came to that uh, that conclusion and that feeling mm -hmm. as as well that this is a this is a pretty cool universe mm -hmm. you know the bebop universe is pretty cool and that uh, it has, well, like, like Ed, you know, for the longest time, nobody knew what Ed's gender was, right? right, mm -hmm. that's right. And, and so mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's really, really cool, really progressive, I, I, yeah. I felt. And yeah. um, so, and who knew that it would be so topical now? Yes, mm -hmm. that's right? right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there was a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of anime series in like the late 90s and Cowboy Bebop really was one of them that actually pushed that boundary. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting thing to kind of like reflect upon. Yeah. Um, just really the impact that a lot of these like, I don't know, going into like the new millennia animes really had. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. thank you, Santa. Thank you, Santa. Thank you Welcome. so much. Santa yeah. from Texas. For that. Okay. I'm for the world. For the world. Uh, oh, oh, Santa, oh, Santa I, 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 I've got this, I got this list. <laughs> Actually, there's you only, guys, you don't there's only one later. thing on it, and it says $500. $500. And then he has a list from his granddaughter, who unfortunately was bit by the acting bug. <laughs> yes, and yes, also she's, needs help. Yeah, she's bitten by the yes. bug. <laughs>
Well, unfortunately, I don't do money. So oh, sorry. I'm know. sorry. <laughs> no cash from Santa. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yes. Did you have something? Thank you so much Did for you? joining us. Oh, is that oh. it? Do you have one more? Oh, we have five minutes. It is. We have, oh, do we have five minutes? Do they have oh. to, do they need the okay. room after we'll go we with that sign? Oh. If they said minutes. we have five, it's their room, so. Okay, so come on up. Last question, maybe, yeah? Yes. Sure, okay. yeah. Edward. What's up, Belle? <laughs> then, Melissa, I'm Hiya. Nice to see you. My name is Edward. I'm from Grand Prix, Texas, Tank County. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I, I have a question, because right at the very end, I, 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 I don't know what's going on with uh, with um <clears throat> with Jet Black and Faye Valentine at the end of the final episode after Spike was killed at the end. Mm. We never know what spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. For those of you that didn't hear, he would like to know how it carried out and what's going on between Jet Black and Faye Valentine. There's something going on. No, right at the very end. <laughs> We never, we never know. We never know right. uh, what their fate was. Well, I think that uh, you know, Faye was cryogenically preserved, right? So Faye was like seventy-three years old, yeah. and yeah. yeah. So um, Jet kind of had a thing for older women. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they might have gone off into the sunset. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the spoilers. No, <laughs> I was kidding, Edward. No. You're totally fine. It's all good. Totally I fine. thought I could just play with you. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the the characters, um, the characters. We don't know what they're up to at the end, though. So the right. great mystery of life, right? Yeah. The great yeah. mystery. Yeah. Where did they all go? Although in it, because I read a lot of cliffhangers. Mm. Especially, I'm canceling a bunch of shows that shows a cliffhanger, and maybe people are trying to bring it back, but that's up to them. Mm. Mm -hmm. Heartbreaking, right? I know. Yeah. You just yeah. need that right. little extra, what happened? And then yeah. it's just right up in here, whatever you want it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard you also appear in some TV shows, movies, and um, commercials. Mm. They have, they have. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Edward. Do we have any final closing messages from you guys? Any, you know, thing, anything that you'd like to plug? Social media happenings, things you're up to, anything you want to tell them about, or just a big old thank you? Big old thank you. Big old thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. You guys are all in our hearts. Right. We're all in our hearts.